Welcome back! We have found the third and final key, which means we can go and rescue uh, the uh, Lady Valenys. However, we also found another key, and we know there is a locked trunk up these stairs, so I guess we should uh, check what's in there. Might be something vitally important that we'll need later on to uh, rescue Valenys. Or not. I guess you can also light the candle here, by the way. Let's see if we can do this without falling to our deaths. Well, this direction worked. I think if you didn't kill Dracula, you also don't get the key, although I'm not entirely certain. You get uh, the gold key, but not the silver one. So you can't unlock the chest. With hands trembling, you fit the little silver key into the lock. Why are you ner so nervous about it? Slowly, you turn it until you hear a click. The old chest is now unlocked. With a creak and a groan, the old lid opens, dragging cobwebs with it. Looking into the interior of the musty chest, you see a dazzling diamond and sapphire tiara. Why would... Uh, Dracula have a tiara. Maybe it belonged to Grandma when she, uh, when she was still involved with Dracula or something. Let's get the tiara. You pick it up and carry it with you. Nice. This tiara is stunning. It is encrusted with diamonds from the back to the front, progressively getting larger. The center stone of the front is a dazzling sapphire. I think we now have the full set of... Uh, Jewelry, we have the bracelet, the necklace, the brooch, the tiara, the earrings, and that's it, I think. And we also have the ruby ring. I don't think uh, Valenice will like that too much. It's a bit macabre. Uh, I can still fall down these damn stairs. <laughs> so let's save. Try and hug the wall again as much as possible. Once you get to the wider bit, it's not so hard anymore. Yes, these kinds of uh, tricky to navigate paths will remain a staple of the series, at least until King's Quest V, where they manage to do it in point and click. I think by King's Quest VI, they uh, decided that wasn't such a good idea after all. And they were right. Okay, now since we still have the um, sugar cube, I don't think that ever wears off, we can walk through here without trouble. Of course, if you didn't think to use the bridle on the snake, you'd have to navigate your way back through here again. I wonder if you didn't use the uh, cloak and ring, if he would require payment again. Although, I guess you can't get by the ghosts without the cloak and the ring. So you have to be wearing it by this point, I suppose. You climb into the decrepit rowboat, and the shrouded fiend pedals across the toxic lake to the shore. Would have been <laughs> very uh, bad if he'd left. Then we'd be stuck on the island. There's no way to get across this poisonous lake. Okay. Let us head back to the door for the final time. I'm still cautious about falling into the uh, chasm. And that is our seventh and final crossing of this bridge. So as we discovered earlier, if we do it again, it breaks. Oh dear, what a shame, the rickety old bridge collapses as you attempt crossing it. You have fallen to your death. Now imagine that you had accidentally crossed it once too often. 
near the beginning of the game, then this would be the point where you discover that, and you have to restore a save game all the way back at the beginning. Although I don't think you can cross it once too often, you'd have to cross it twice to get back. Um, which means you would have already fell, uh, fallen through after reading the uh, hint for the third key. Anyway, still not nice. And I want that save game. I have no idea how I'm doing on points, because I am not following a walkthrough. I think I got everything, but then again, I fought that in Kingsworth 1 as well. And I ended up with a point short there, so we'll see how this ends up. I'm sure some of you, if I've missed something, will be shouting at the screen now. Beware, the fairy spill spell has worn off. Well, we don't need it. Let's unlock the final door. The key to the third door fits easily into the keyhole. You turn the key, and presto, the door opens, and again the key disappears, revealing a world unlike any you've ever seen before. And we automatically go through. And there's no way back. Well, that's just dandy. Well, this is a weird place. Blue sand. Purple uh, sea. Red sky. Game wins some points for atmosphere, at least. The sand on the sparkling beach is a deep blue. The bright sunlight from a gorgeous pink sky dances across it. Cliffs tower above the beach. A very bizarre place indeed. And I'm gonna save. Good practice, as you know. Let's explore this strange place, and it seems that we've already come to a dead end. The sand on the sparkling beach is a deep blue. There is a fishing net in a pile on the beach. The fishing net. You reach down and retrieve the fishing net. Don't think we can go any further. You need to be a little closer to drink the water. I'm standing... Uh, oh. How, is that close enough? You fall into the swift water and are washed out to sea, where you drown. Well, you may still be delighted by our score, but that certainly wasn't what I intended to do. Can you drink the water from here? Yeah! You cough and choke from the briny water of the ocean. I guess so. But not from the waterfall. That would be sweet water, but it's still pink, so... Not entirely sure if it would be healthy. Let's see if there's anywhere else we can go. Hmm. Another dead end. The sand on the sparkling beach is a deep blue. Yes, that message is some one we've already seen. Well, since it's a dead end, let's see if we can swim. The water is too turbulent to swim in. You've just drowned. I guess not. Hmm. Well, what do we do then? Well, we found the fishing net, so let's try and fish, shall we? Who knows, maybe we can... Fish up a boat? I don't know. You fish and fish and fish. However, no matter how hard you try, you don't seem to be able to catch anything. Yes, because a fishing pole would help. Or some lure. Or bait. I'll just have to keep doing this. Until we catch something, like now. You cast the fishing net into the wild sea. Upon retrieving it, you see you've caught a large golden fish. It falls from the net and flops helplessly on the beach. Wow, that is a big fish. The large fish is covered with shimmering golden scales. Its graceful fins and tail are almost translucent. Right now, the beautiful fish is writhing in agony. Hi, fish. The fish is unable... The ga gasping fish is unable to utter a sound. Hey, the snake could talk. It's worth a try. 
Catfish. You grab the flopping fish. Its mouth is wide open and its gills are extended. With difficulty, you hold the fish as it twists and turns in your hands. Um, okay. You know what? I'm not hungry. Let's throw it back. Let's be kind to animals. You throw the poor, gasping fish back into the iridescent water. Gratefully, it calls to you. In return for saving you my life, I wish to offer you a ride across this ocean. Oh, now it can talk. So we get the ride to fish! So let's do so. Wee! Wee! I think this would make me sick, but anyway. Ooh! And an island. I hope we're getting closer to Valonis. Otherwise, we'd be in trouble. You can see that the island is really quite small. The foliage is remarkable, though. Plants and flowers have overgrown it, some growing very large in contrast to the tiny island. Okay. That's pretty nice. I guess we'll explore this island and hope that uh, we can find our uh, goal here, the Lady Valenice, in the next video.